What is going on guys, DBG here, and in this video we have got the Redeem team, the 2008 Olympic basketball team, who some people actually argue is the greatest team ever put together. I don't understand where that argument came from because they almost lost to a Spain team in the final who had a 17 year old Ricky Rubio playing almost the entire game at point guard whose second best player Jose Calderon was injured. Marcus Gasol hadn't gotten to the NBA yet. And yes, Pau was an all-star, but he was by far their best player. And there's probably been better Spain teams, to be completely honest. 2012 with the two Gasol brothers close enough to their prime and Serge Ibaka may have been better. But uh, anyway, this 2008 team struggled big time against that Spain team. Although in terms of collection of talent, you could definitely make an argument is the greatest collection of talent we've ever seen. So basically, we have got the nine play first nine players these guys, I think, were the starting five. And then we have Chris Paul, Micah Red, Wade, Boozer, and representing Chris Bosch, Marvin Bagley. But there are three guys in the game that are not, or three guys in the team that aren't in the game. So, first of all, Darren Williams. Darren Williams is not of a card this year. However, I was trying to flick through point guards, and I couldn't find anyone that was really similar to Darren Williams. And it was the same with Tayshaun Prince. I couldn't really find a long, lanky, defensive-minded 6'9", small forward. So I decided just to leave two of them out. And just to make sure we had a starting five and bench, I put in Bagley, who I think his stats, this card, well, not Bagley in general, but the Bagley card is similar to Bosch. Good in the post, good enough mid-range, decent three-point shooter. He's got a good enough block rating, decent defender, and just overall just a solid player. I think this is probably the closest we have to Chris Bosch in this game. So that's why he is in the squad at this position. So the team we have got is Jason Kidd at the one. Jason Kidd didn't play too much. Like he started, but he didn't play that many minutes. Chris Paul played most minutes at the point or Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wade and Kobe were the two guys that carried this team. Sure, LeBron was, actually he didn't win MVP. He was coming into the season where he won his first MVP in 08-09. Sure, LeBron would have been one of the biggest names, but it was Kobe and Dwayne Wade that really carried this team. Dwayne Wade, after a not great 08 season with the Miami Heat, where they had the worst record in the NBA, and he was injured for a lot of it, had a great Olympics, and then led the league in scoring the next year. Kobe Bryant was exceptional, was brilliant down the stretch against Spain to win the Olympics. Melo is, well, obviously Olympic Melo. He's won three um, gold medals, and a lot of people are calling him the greatest Olympian ba Olympic basketball player of all time. Winning those three gold medals with Team USA, like he was part of the worst Team USA ever. You can't forget that. He did play fairly decent minutes in 2004 and they got beaten twice by Puerto Rico and Greece. Got nothing on Oscar Schmidt, the greatest Olympic basketball player of all time. But um, then we had Dwight Howard at center. Dwight Howard had just come off one of his, well, his real breakout year where he won defensive player of the year and cemented himself as one of the best big men in the NBA if not the best. So Dwight Howard had, so Dwight Howard was kind of just about to enter his prime, even though he was so young at the time, it was hard to believe that his prime was in his like early 20s. Dwight Howard was on track to be one of the best centers in NBA history. And had he come into the league 10 years earlier, I think he would have been. Like, if this was 10 years ago, the way Dwight Howard plays, how good a rebounder he is, how good he is around the basket, he'd still be one of the best centers in the NBA. However, the lack of shooting has kind of, uh, definitely had a massive, a massive effect on his career as well as obviously the injuries. I don't know why I put Dwayne Wade in a center. But um, yeah, off the bench we had CP3. I don't know, why do, why do I keep changing? What's going on? <laughs> off the bench we have CP3 at the one. Chris Paul was the best point guard in the NBA at that stage. He, a lot of people argue he should have won the 2008 MVP and led the New Orleans Hornets at the time to a really good record. Then we have got Dwayne Wade. So Dwayne Wade, Again, not a great season for Miami, but was unbelievable for this Olympic team, was unbelievable the next year for the Miami Heat. Michael Redd, who was a really great player for the Milwaukee Bucks. A lot of people have kind of forgot about how good he was, one of the best scorers in the NBA. Carlos Boozer, who was part of the Utah Jazz team. Him and Darren Williams, as well as Andre Karolenko and Mehmet Okor, were a, were a big four, pretty much. And they had the likes of Paul Millsap coming off the bench. That was a great Utah Jazz team. And then obviously we had Chris Bosh, who was with the Raptors, being represented by Marvin Bagley. So anyway, yeah, that is the team. One of the best collections of talent we've ever seen, but in my opinion, the most overrated team in history, the Redeem team. But anyway, now let's get on to the game. All right, so we are playing against not a very good team here, so you have a massive advantage. I remember the Redeem team though. Like they were very, they were good, to be fair. But I just mean like when you're comparing them to, like even the, like the best Team USA I've ever seen was the 2014 um, World Championships. 
Like, I know, obviously, player for player, it wasn't like they were anywhere near as good as this team or the Dream Team. They just murdered everyone. They murdered good teams. Like, Serbia were nice. Milos Teodosic in 2014 was really good. I think, I'm pretty sure he picked up a fairly big injury even before going to the NBA, and then he was injured half his time in the NBA anyway. He came long after his prime, but he was great in 2014. The Serbian team was nice. Obviously, I think the Serbian team is better now in Nikola Jokic, but they were really good in that uh, tournament. They also, like, I know they didn't come up against Spain, but at the same time, like, France beat Spain fairly comfortably. Go bear balled out. They beat Lithuania handily, and, man, that was just, they hammered everybody. There was no one that could touch them. I've never seen a Team USA like that. With the Olympics, I'm pretty sure they were down in the second half against Croatia. And there are still, there are genuinely a lot of people in Europe that argue that if Yugoslavia had still been, like, had still been around and they'd entered as Yugoslavia instead of all the separate teams, that they would have ran the dream team close. And I'm not going to make that much of an argument that they wouldn't. Like, the dream team didn't play as good as, like, the sum of their parts, like. And that's always going to be the case when you put all these stars together. And that's why I think Team USA in 2014 worked so well. Like, I know they had some really good players. Kyrie Irving won MVP the whole thing. Anthony Davis was great. But it wasn't all just a group of stars. I think that's why that team was so good. And we are killing this guy here. I'm 14. I haven't even been focusing. The 2012 Olympic team was good as well. They just didn't have any bigs, like Tyson Chandler. Really? And that was their only big man. Kevin Love as well. 2016 Olympic team was nice. I'll give them that, but they nearly lost to Australia and also nearly lost to France. I'm trying to think who, what, which other teams there was. The Redeem team, again, nearly lost to Spain. But the 2014 World Cup team destroyed everyone. Like, they should be known as the Redeem team, the redemption team that they can hammer out, that USA are streets ahead of every other country. They're the last USA team to prove that. And I know they won the Olympic final handily in 2016, but that team didn't prove anything. They went out with 12 of probably the best 16 players in the competition and struggled in a lot of their games. Have I scored eight points with Jason Kidd's broken jumper in this game? All right, we're now onto our bench. This may be the first time I've ever used Carlos Boozer in 2K. Unlucky. And like Carlos Boozer, I'm trying to think. Memento Core is not in 2K, Darren Williams is in 2K, so you can't even recreate that Jazz team. You've only got Millsap, you've got Boozer and Karolenko. Good shot there by Bagley. Let's go. This is game over. And we've, we're only just in the second quarter. They need, like, a mercy rule is a must for 2K20. I'm sorry. There has to be some sort of a mercy rule. Like, you can't, like, I understand it's only a 19 point game, so this is understandable, but if I was really focusing, this would be 40 right now. Let's go pull up. Green. Good shot, Melo. We were actually struggling a little bit. I've really lost focus in this game, and we're only up 16. Right into Dwight. No one there. Easy dunk. Kobe. Leaner. Good shot. Knocked it down. See, this this game here, this is what the Redeem team versus a Jose Calderon-less Spain team with a 17-year-old point guard should have looked like. This is what that game should have looked like. But instead, it was like a two-point game with six minutes to go. How is that a light leap? I know it went in, but how is that a light contest? Bang. Mello is taking over this game right now. Green. Green over a minute hole trying to contest it. Great shot, Mello. Ooh, bad shot. Kobe hits it. Kobe's now going to take over. Oh, man. We are killing them. Kobe, why not? Why not fade? Knocks it down. Yeah, just as like I said at the start of this game, if I focused, it was going to be 40, and guess what? It's 41. Let's go. Pull up. Kobe Bryant. That's a bad miss. Run to three-point line. Three, two. We got him. Green. Bang. Buzz or nearly a buzzer beater. We are up by 45 points going into the fourth. Okay, man. I was going to take over again off a rebound for some reason. That's a good contest there by David West, but LeBron with... Gatorade symbol gets the board. Actually, no, he doesn't have it. 
Canelo has got 42 points in this game. We've scored 100. And we win that game in the end by 54 points. So in the end, Carmelo Anthony had 42 points. Kobe Bryant at 18. Dwight Howard at 10. 0 of 2 from 3, unfortunately, for Dwight, who had not yet missed a 3-pointer for me up to then. LeBron James at 9. Jason Kidd at 8. Bagley at 8. Michael Red at 5. Boozer at 2. And the rest didn't score or didn't play. So our bench was actually minus 1, but I started as a plus 55. So anyway, that's the video. This is the 2008 Redeem Team. One of the greatest collections of talents ever put together, and by no means a bad Team USA. There were definitely worse Team USAs. The 2004 Olympic team that lost to Puerto Rico and Argentina was significantly worse. The 2006 World Cup team with Kirk Heinrich playing on it that didn't even win that was significantly worse. I don't even know if you can consider the Dream Team the greatest team of all time. They didn't, like they weren't playing against the best competition. They, their competition was taking pictures with them. And they still didn't run through teams as easy as the 2014 World Cup team did, which in my opinion is the greatest team ever assembled. But anyway, that's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.